two decades after the murder of Daniel Boises, an arrest has been made in connection with the case. Boises, who is also known as Daniel Morgan Turner, was 22, year old, 22 years old when he was last seen on December 1st, 1996 at his home in the Northeast community of Falconridge. In 1998, information was given to police that led investigators to believe he had met with foul play. After a homicide investigation was launched at the time, but due to lack of evidence and the fact that Boyce's body had not been located, the case went cold. It was learned that the accused and Boyce's were roommates at the time of the homicide. On June 20th, 2016, the CPS Homicide Unit cold case detectives began reviewing the file. And after a thorough investigation and the gathering of additional evidence, detectives were able to make an arrest. It is believed that Boises was fatally attacked by the accused, who then allegedly disposed of Boises' body. On Tuesday, March 6, 2018, Randall Edward Westman, pardon me, Randolph Edward Westman, 57, of Edmonton, was arrested and charged with second degree murder and indignity to a dead body. Oh, and take your questions now. Where, where did this happen? Uh, are we assuming it? You said they lived together. Is that right? Did, did it happen in the house? Tell me about it. Yeah, it happened in, in a home in in the community of uh, Falcon Ridge. And they were they were roommates. At they were roommates at the time of the homicide. Yes. So was the body never found? The body has never been recovered. No. Um, so were there, were there additional tips or anything like that that's come in recently that have uh, led CPS to these charges? We have obviously obtained additional evidence, uh, which has led us to the point where we've reached the Crown's approval to uh, charge Mis Mr. Uh, Westman with second-degree murder and indignity to a human body. Um, what, what more is known about the relationship uh, between these two men? It seems like there was a large age difference between the two and uh, they were roommates. I mean, family, friends, any information like that? Yeah, no, they had been uh, friends for at least a number of months that we were aware of, but and they were living together at the time. Were there suspicions of this individual, like when the occurrence happened 20 years ago? Uh, Was we he didn't. Always been like a sus suspect? We were given information in 1998. Um, that led us to believe that Mr. Boyce's uh, had met with foul play. An investigation was launched at that point, and then Mr. Westman has been a suspect since 1998. Um, sort of what, what's, what is, you mentioned additional information, but uh, I mean, what, what else has changed in this case from 1998 to now? Well, we've obtained, like I've said, we've obtained additional evidence, um, and to respect the court process. We can't get into details about specifics of uh, evidence that we've obtained. Can you tell us if it's physical evidence or was it just information? Well, we can tell you that it's very difficult to uh, gather further physical evidence on a, on a file that's 22 years old. So um, I'll well, leave it at that. Was he accused arrested in Edmonton or in Calgary? He was arrested in Calgary. He was arrested in Calgary by a vice officer? Yes, yes, he was. You know, how does a case like this, I mean, 20 plus years on, um, I mean, what are some of the challenges and some of the obstacles um, faced by CBS during a cold case as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, active current murder, I guess? Well, you can look at it two ways. Uh, sometimes time is of a hindrance to an investigation, and sometimes time is beneficial to an investigation. There are times when people's allegiances change, people's motivation to come forward changes. Um, I've done some, uh, a little bit on this in the past, but I mean, uh, what can you tell me about, uh, about Boises at the time uh, of the murder? What do we know about him uh, at, at that time? Uh, we know that uh, he was a 22-year-old male living with, uh, with uh, Westman at the time, and we believe he was uh, living somewhat of a transient uh, lifestyle at that point. Can you elaborate what do you mean by somewhat of a transient lifestyle? Well, based on the information we have, uh, he didn't necessarily uh, live in one location over an extended period of time. So. Do you know how long they had lived together for? Uh, like I say, uh, we believe that uh, they first met in the community in northwestern Alberta, and uh, uh, they moved to Calgary at some point, 
and we believe the the relationship was uh, at least a number of months. I don't know if you've uh, spoke with um, Boyce's family. Have they had any reaction to the charges? The Obviously, they're um, from their perspective. They're very, uh, you know, they're glad to know what has happened to him, but at the same time, to learn that, uh, uh, you know, he's been murdered is, is difficult for the family. Indignity to a body, is it just, do you have evidence that something occurred from the person you charged, or do you have to go on assumption now that there's a missing body and dignity was given to what? Can you elaborate on how you know there's indignity to a body? Well, based on, on the evidence that we obtained, we have gathered uh, enough evidence to support that charge um, from the Crown's perspective. So, And I want to protect the integrity of the court process as well. And I want to also um, respect the family, family members, Mr. Boyce's family members, uh, and really don't want to get into details surrounding that. It's pretty, pretty solid evidence that there's a disposal of Correct. Yeah. So, is there physical evidence that you can that you're allowed to discuss uh, at the scene back in 1996? Um, I can tell you that uh, DNA did play a part in this investigation. In the new part of the investigation, as in, did you open it up and do DNA now, or did you do DNA there? No, um, we looked at DNA uh, back in 1998 and also uh, further evidence with respect to uh, DNA. Some items are still at the crime lab right now, so we're awaiting results on that. When do you expect to get those results? Um, within a number of months, likely. Do you have a better description than like Falcon Ridge for the last place that Daniel Turner was in? Yeah, he, they, they lived in the community of Falcon Ridge, uh, you, you in a house. Like a, you know, like a street or uh, like crossroads out there, like uh, for correlation, because it's a pretty good community. Yeah. Um, Under block or anything? Yeah. I don't think it's really relevant to, at this point. Oh, we just need B-roll, so this it happened before we were in the station, so I need some kind of, otherwise we're doing radio and TV. Pardon me? I need some kind of visual for the story. Right. We'll see if we can get you across street. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you say whether the uh, suspect is cooperating with police on maybe finding uh, the suspect has not been cooperative in the investigation. Um, just, on, just on the suspect on Westman, I mean, obviously he's been known to police since 98 when, uh, when that information came in. Um, you know, was he known to police prior to that, or has he been the subject of, uh, of any other investigations since that time? Um, he's known to uh, police services throughout Alberta as far as uh, he's not known for anything in relation to this type of violence. Can you tell us at all about his uh, history as a great member? No, sorry, we can't discuss his history other than saying he's known to us. No, yeah. Are you expecting to find, um, not to be crass, whatever remains of the remains at this point? Uh, at this point, we do not believe uh, there is a strong likelihood that we're going to receive um, any body parts. Can you describe the relationship between the victim and the suspect other than just that he was living in the same place as him? Yeah, I, well, they were living together. They were somewhat uh, um, acquaintances and had been for a number of months, as far as we know. And you believe it, any reason to believe it was a romantic relationship? or No, no, not between... Uh, the two of them for sure. But did you say something about them meeting somewhere outside of Calgary and then moving to Calgary? I said they lived in a community in northwestern Alberta Can you be prior to. Specific? No. So, so they lived, they knew each other from back home or whatever, Right, yeah. And then they moved to Calgary. Correct. And were they working or anything like that here? Or at the time, you don't uh, at the time, I can't really comment. And so this was reopened because new evidence came forward or is this an active reopening of old cold cases? Is it on uh, your part or something came forward that made you really look No, we, uh, we 
We continuously review all of our cold cases, and in June of 2016, this case was reviewed, and it was decided at that time we will take another look at the investigation. So, yeah, it goes without saying that, you know, cases can go cold, but we will do our best in every situation, no matter whether it's two years or 22 years, to uh, try to try to solve a homicide investigation. Was something was something potentially missed in the first investigation, um, or did you delve deeper in, did, or did something something change in what was known before? No, we just were able to, uh, like I say, time is a benefit for cold case investigations, so we were able to uh, gather further evidence. Uh, based on that space and time from 1996 to uh, 2018. So stories can change. Exactly. Change. People's allegiances change. Uh, you know, maybe maybe people. Uh, I'm speaking in a general sense. Uh, maybe people. Anybody that is a witness to a homicide, they have a number of different reasons why they don't want to come forward. Uh, they may be scared. You know, uh, allegiances change, etc. And over time, those things change with with individuals. So, it's a benefit for us. Can you speak to maybe the difficulty of bringing charges or bringing a case to court like this without a piece of evidence on the body? Well, it's uh, suffice to say, our um, threshold to lay a charge is significantly high. They all have to be reviewed by uh, an assigned crown prosecutor and. The crown was uh, was uh, satisfied with the evidence we had in order to lay a charge. So when cases go cold, can you maybe elaborate on this? The reason is not because they, they don't think that they'd be able to solve it. It's just that there's not enough evidence to bring to trial. Is that what happened with a lot of these cases? Absolutely. Back in 1998, we were not in a position where charges would be supported. Um, and as time goes along, little bits of evidence uh, um, are obtained, and you obtain you obtain the necessary uh, evidence to to lay a charge in those situations. And yeah, so like you say, uh, time is a benefit to us for a number of different reasons. And this is a normal maybe explain for people who don't know, but this is a normal process you guys do with cold cases. Is bringing a different team to look at something? Yeah, fresh set of eyes to, to look at an investigation. And like I say, uh, sometimes it's um, people coming forward. Some, obviously, uh, we as police re require uh, witnesses and the public to come forward. We require um, the media to help us um, obtain further evidence in, in cases as well. So. Um, and we're just uh, um, very satisfied that we're able to get to this point uh, today and able to, and able to uh, charge Mr. Westman with uh, Mr. Poises' homicide. And it's safe to say you're, you're, you're alluding to it, but in this particular case, time was a benefit to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, on, uh, on Westman, um, and so does he rely, uh, residing in Calgary or in Edmonton? He, he's of Edmonton. He's residing in, in Edmonton, okay. or uh, was. Any information on how or why he was in Calgary at the time of his arrest? Uh, we believe he was visiting here in Calgary. Yeah. Was that a coincidence? Would you have had the Edmonton Police Service arrest him in Edmonton if he had not been visiting, or were you waiting for him to come here? Well, again, I, I don't want to get into uh, details, but if uh, we're in a situation where um, you know, we need the Edmonton Police Service to arrest somebody for us. We will reach out to them or any other police service. Um, uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned DNA back in 1996 uh, and, and how that might have uh, led to this. I mean, uh, were there any developments in sort of DNA technology between now and then which, which sort of helped in that uh, identifying any of that DNA or, or with that evidence? Well, because all the DNA isn't, all the DNA results aren't back that we resubmitted, we can't really comment on that at, at this point. Uh, in but general sense, is it safe to say that a, a piece of DNA from 1996, when examined under uh, examined now, could could show some different results? Oh, it, it could in a general sense, but I'm not talking about this particular case. Right. The, the DNA uh, we were able to obtain back in 1998, 
helped us with the investigation today. But you're able to comment on if, if you know, uh, advancements in DNA technology um, or, or uh, analysis um, have, have sort of helped with, with those charges today? Like I say, um, not to this point, but we do have uh, exhibits bef uh, in front of the crime lab that uh, are still pending. The results are still pending, so I can't necessarily answer that question for them. So just to clarify too, so he was killed in 96, but we didn't even, nobody reported 98. him missing or anything until 98. Oh, 98. So there's that, there was really nothing known in that two year period. Right? He wasn't reported missing until that time? Nothing came forward until 1998. So this wasn't even something that the police were investigating at all until 1998. Did it That's know? correct. Until 98, yeah. Yeah. So that poses another uh, barrier, right, with respect to scenes and so following like, up leads, et cetera. So like there was like a year and a half, two years, whatever, right. difference between the time the event happened and anyone noticed that this guy was missing? Or yeah. Reported it. Anybody reporting it. So he was first reported missing to CPS, right? Yeah, that's when someone came forward with information right. that led them to believe that he was in that position. Was that family? Uh, a witness came forward. Yeah. A witness, a witness to the alleged murder. Yeah, a witness uh, leading us to believe that he had been met with foul play. In the sorry, in the general sense of witness, just to clarify, we all just asked: it, Did they witness the crime? Did, did they witness an altercation or a physical altercation? Um, there were witnesses that came forward uh, and to respect the court process and everything, uh, I'm not going to comment specifically on where and when which witnesses came forward. But there were well. more than one witness, there were witnesses. There are witnesses in this case. Uh, which, which uh, without details, but they witnessed an act that, an, uh, that could have resulted in a death, is that? Yeah, like I say, I want to respect the court process at this point, so I want to, don't want to get into uh, specifics about what witnesses saw and didn't see and when they saw it and when they didn't see it. So that's part of the investigation, and now it's part of the court process, so we don't really want to get into that. Can you speak to what you know, people had heard about what he was last doing? Did they think he was in Calgary? Did they think he was working away? Uh, really, his his uh, family had lost contact with him. Uh, both his families had lost contact with him. So, um, and unfortunately, people do lose contact with their families. Um, and uh, I can't comment on the type of relationship he had with his families as well uh, prior to that. So, but it was just his last known whereabouts was in this Falcon That's right. Correct. Yeah. But he lost touch with his family, but they did not report this to Calgary Police. That's right.